What's going on, Menace? Episode 132 of Menace and the Man? You tell me, dude. Might be. I'm going to move back, actually. So I was probably loud. I was loud before, but what's going on, Menace? Uh, just, you know, I got, I was up there doing line work all weekend. Working nights. Did you see 291? I saw the very first woman's fight. Terrible. So I'm sitting there with two line. I'm sitting there with uh, my foreman and lineman. They don't really know anything about fighting. I'm like, the ugly blonde's gonna win. <laughs> uh, and yeah, she wrestled her and submitted her. We love you, Miranda Maverick. Don't listen to minutes. But yeah, the ugly blonde. She's up your uh, alley, right? No, drinking, drinking wise. If I'm drinking. I'm she's up my alley. Sure. Yeah, she's what Miranda Maverick. I don't know. I mean, she probably got a nice body, right? A lot of fighter chicks have nice bodies, yeah. but imagine if she's like, I have such disdain for women's MMA like that, to like, I hang out with a fighter chick, I'm just like, you know, I mean, oh. just hanging out with her, I start thinking how shitty, how shitty her technique is, I'm like, oh, you know what, second thought, I'm not interested. <laughs> Anywho, uh. And even in that fight, I want, I had the other girl, I was like, I'm picking the other girl. She really? Was, she was a big underdog, but then she has zero grappling. So I was like rooting. Which is wild because you're. I feel like all Brazilians have grappling. Like and here, why I picked the other girl? Because Maverick has sold me before. You know, like her law. What does she have? One loss or two losses? I forget, but I remember. What do you mean she sold you? Just I had her huge favorite and I picked her and she went out and fucking. Eh, eh. Like, you know, it's like, oh, she doesn't know how to fight. What is she doing in the U? Maybe she had her period. That's what I'm saying. That's why that is why women's MMA can be a little trickier than men's as far as predictability of what happens when they step in the cage. Because they have all the same factors that men are going through and add in. No, but more. but on a serious note, she went in I'm being took, serious with that. No, no. The Miranda, she went in, she took her down, and she uh submitted her. She did you know. Yeah. Took a, a Ronda Rousey path. Yeah. I mean, I didn't see it. Like, you know, she passed well. She set up the submission well. We started it with, she's ugly. Now I'm getting her up. Watch her be like, oh, you know, not bad looking. <laughs> she gets dialed up. And then Maybe again, I was being aggressive. I don't know. Take nothing we say seriously. I love, uh, all, I love all women. Especially and then the I saw, women. who's the fighter? Oh, all right. Yeah, maybe. Yes. De Question definitely is. drinking. I, I, I've hooked up with worse. Then the next fight, who's the guy I told you of that Russian that would do this guy's problem? I mean, that's not bad at all, right there. Can't wait, yeah. yeah. The Rock Kopolev. Yes. You messaged me about Kopolev. Kopolev I looked saw good. that whole fight and I was like, dude, this guy is. Because in my head, he can probably grapple like a motherfucker, too. Right? That dude, let me see. Because I know he's on like a Russian like striking team from back in the day or something like that. Yeah. Um, but he just looked actually that Brazilian bum rushed him a few times, and it fucked him up. It it threw All him right. off. Well, he's lost to Carl Robertson, who uh you know is uh a lower tier. Okay. For, you know, top twenty. Let me see what they have. Ah, well, they, they have him ranked 85, so never mind top 20. But at one point he was. I remember he had a couple wins. Now he's falling off. I remember he fought Glover. But now, yeah, four losses in a row that I guess I didn't pay attention to. But since then, three wins in a row. One being three stoppages. So. Who, the Russian? Yeah. Oh, you know who he beat? Puna. Soriano. Okay. If you sit there and strike with him, that's that's he's good. Yes, if but if you bum Bruno, rush him and he's not good there, I noticed. You know what it was? This Russian he had a rough start. Lost his first two in the UFC. Now it's one three in a row. What's so his maybe name again? Kopolev. Kopolev. Rome, Roman Kopolev. And then those other fights, the dude Bonfim. You, I told you him. You see that fight? No. That dude's good. Um, I did see the Ray Lewis, or not the Ray Lewis, the um, Derek Lewis fight. Bon Theme is from Vicente Luque's gym. Okay. In At, Brazil? In Brazil, I believe. Serato MMA, and that's that gym that I've seen Gilbert down there. Okay. 
Yeah, that's where Gilbert is from. And that's who he just fought? No. Bonfim is from that gym. So I'm saying the guy Bonfim, he put Trevin Giles. The guy Bonfim is like someone to watch. Took Trevin, not the Trevin Giles is, the, you know, the best, but the guy took him down, submitted him, was like, oh, this guy's right. Le- like levels to jiu-jitsu or levels to grappling. This guy seems like he's pretty good. Next level. 15 and up. And then the upset for Menace and the Man was Michael Chiesa. I didn't oh. want to see our boy go out like that, but Kevin Hall, I know he's a big pothead. He, he smoked Chiesa. I, I only saw the end result and the submission. Um, I th- thought Chiesa was like a solid jiu-jitsu player. Chiesa once dropped Jorge Masvidal. Like, his striking is so weird. Like, some fights, it's like, oh, it's not bad tonight. And then some fights, it's like, wow. This guy's in the UFC. That's how bad his striking looked. In the really? Fight. He was like covering up and just like not, didn't look good. Like looked, he hasn't fought in two years. Something, maybe he got hit a with a ring rust. Maybe he got hit with a shot and then just his, re- he didn't look, his reactions were not good. And then I saw a clip. He called, well, not that, you know, you could say anything like, oh, the guy might hit me with a left hand and knock me out. But he, uh, oh, I forgot that thing he called that he was like Kevin Holland's really good with a Doris choke, and I sent you that. That you didn't watch that? No, I didn't see that. He did an interview, and he was like, you know, I know Kevin Holland's really good with a Doris choke, and I've had problems with the Doris choke because he's lost a few fights by Doris choke. He lost to Masvidal. He lost to Vicente Luque. All you have to do is just double up on the one hand. He like lets dead to rights. He gets to the point where it's like he's in there, and then even. There's all because you can kind of feel a dar stroke coming on a little bit. For sure, if they have you in a front headlock, like double up on one hand because that's where it starts. A lot of even a Dars defense is front headlock defense, right? But a thing that I always have with triangles, head and arm triangles, Dars is anything. So you're trying to make this right. You're trying to do whatever, and you're trying to squeeze and take all the space out of there. Right. So what do I got to do to defend it? Great space. That's all you gotta do. Right. I remember when I was a little kid being like, I'm gonna make this, I'm gonna take like physics to this. Like, oh, you're gonna arm bar me this way, so what do I gotta do? Just make sure that my body is right. positioned to where my arm. So I used to, I developed, I was able to hitchhike out of arm bars like very right. quick. Right. Same thing with like dar strokes. I remember I had trouble with it in the beginning when I first started training with all the Lima guys and the Dars guys. And then when you know how to apply the move, you know how to, you should. So what sucks for it. me with the Dar's choke is I'm in that position often, whether it's north, south, or front headlock. My arms are like too short to like hit it nice, I yeah. feel. And I'm squeezing my elbow, my fucking biceps are burning. I'm like, ah. I remember I had struggled with it in competition. And, and it was like my, I was good at all the moves. But someone like Kessa or Holland with those long arms, that's like it, well, perfect. It's tricky. It's like a head and, uh, remember, were you good with a head and arm triangle? Uh, I'm still pretty, yeah. It's like a head and arm triangle, or whenever you have the arm in there, arm and guillotine, those ones are a little tricky, where it's like, right. rare naked choke, it's, I have it, I can even have a weird angle, and I'm yeah, squeezing squeeze. the arm. Those other ones are like, but how is he surviving this? Like, people probably were watching, like, Tony's gonna like survive this. Yeah. It's all you need. But, Kiesa is a high-level grappler. It's also under the lights, so you sure. struggle with that, and you're like, after the fight, I'm sure you're like, I knew the yeah. defense to that. Well, there's that, and then... Uh, Just looked uncomfortable. Yeah. Well, like you said, maybe he got hit with a shot that... Tough, tough to watch, because I was... people are like, let, just get me out of here. I like Kevin Holland, too, but I like Especially Fiesta. Especially when you're, like, a vet vet. You know what I mean? When you've been in there for over 15 fights, you're just like... Three in a row now for Kiesa, too. And then that's what's tough is he was just a contender. At 170. He was just number That's five right. at 170. Then he lost to Luque, then Sean Brady, and now Holland. Two Darsh chokes. Those that. guys are all really good. Murderers. All those guys are any given night type of guys. I would actually even... I like Holland. I'd take him off that list. I'd say Luque and Brady are like any given night guys. Did those two fight yet? Luque and Brady? Yeah. No. Maybe it was supposed to be... We'll get back to that. Maybe it was supposed to be... No, it was supposed to be him versus RDA, and that got pushed back, but Luke versus RDA. But Kiesa, what does he do now? Just 
if I'm him, especially after the two-year layoff, what's tough with him is, and you've seen it, it was your situation. Once you fight at a certain level, that's the opponents we're throwing at you. You know? Yes. Um... Even Tay. Tay was like, oh, we're going to... Not the record, but a sleeper, Dennis. He's fucking people up in Arizona. There's like rumblings at like. You know what would be a dope move for him? Patty Piplip. Who? Come up or I'll come down. For Kiesa. You know what it is? It's, you can't call out the smaller guy. It's always tough because then you're like a weight bully ish. Or I'll come down. Yes, can't go down no more. And he's dumb at 55. He's a 70. Way too big. I Way agree. too big now. But I like where your head was at. Well, hang on. That's Patty... Frivola's fight next. Hopefully. Patty's getting too big for the weight class, I feel. No, he seems like a Rumble-ish. Remember how Rumble... I used to yes. hear stories of Rumble being Fat Elvis. Right. I remember Rampage Jackson told that story. That Rumble was... Or no, King Mo told the story. That they used to call Rumble Johnson in college Fat Elvis. Or Elvis. Because every time they'd see him, you know, he, it, or if you saw him off season, he was huge. Right. First, you saw him. Come fight night. Yeah. Oh, even there, we didn't, because we weren't podcasting, you know, RIP to Rumble. Yes. And then, do you have any memories with Rumble? Because I know you were around him a few times when you were um, fighting. Kind of like you see him on camera. He's similar in person, pretty soft spoken, kind of quiet guy. Um, but also the way he walks, the way he talks, like, you're just like, you don't, no one makes fun of him. Nobody. He had, and it's funny that him and Tyrone both respected you and were fans of you. He has that Tyrone, Mike Tyson thing of like, I've seen you kill people. I've seen right. you knock Glover dead. I've seen you knock Gustafsson dead, yeah. you know. What, uh, he had gotten cancer, right? Apparently, yeah. Like, I think Hopkins lymphoma. Right. And it kind of just. Uh, right. That's what it was. I think he was sick and was hiding it or keeping yes. it under wraps, private. But even you saw that with the fucking, what's his name? The the Black Panther. Right. Nobody knew he was Was sick. that the same thing? He had some type of cancer as well. It's crazy. How quick cancer could take you out. You know, knock on wood. Yeah. Nobody gets that. But but from, like, you know, I remember seeing pictures always, even before we started podcasting and seeing, because, you know, Tyrone Spong was on the mat, but like, Rumble was the guy at one point. Yeah. He was, you know, and I remember seeing pictures of you with Rumble and Tyrone and being like, oh my God. Dude, those guys, it, it sounded like thunder. Yeah. When they would spar or hit mitts. Yeah. 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 You were just like, Ooh. yeah. Ooh. But that was a thing we missed. Cause I remember, yeah, you definitely were around him a little bit. Yeah. And he, he, he uh... was a, uh, Complete uh, stud. Uh, fan favorite in the fight community yes. simply because you knew if a rumble fight yes. was happening, war. But that was awesome that what he didn't get cut at 170. He just They would always no did he, he get cut at 170? He, he got cut at one point, went out of the UFC and started winning fights. I think remember and he went two oh five started murdering. Remember at one point Rumble was funny, if you will, that he missed weight, they made put him up a weight class and then he missed weight up a weight class. Ah, uh, I don't remember that. Yeah, he missed weight at 70. They put him up at 85, and then he missed weight at 85. And they were like, really? Really? <laughs> he was a big boy, big boned. But, oh, but that's yeah. what it was. King Mo used to say that story. And someone he was doing an interview, and someone was like, what do you think about Rumble? And he was like, you mean Elvis? And the person was like, what do you mean Elvis? And they were like, yeah, he'd always balloon up. Funny off topic, I remember Rob Scotty told me a story. A guy we used to train with. That he saw Rumble out one night, years and years and years ago. He was out at a bar, and he said Rumble Johnson walked in with one of the biggest chicks you'll ever see. Really? Yeah. Apparently had a thing for the big ladies. Might have been like a sister. Or, you know, maybe, but... Because you know how, like, I feel like... I don't know. No, I don't think it was a sister. Because I think, like, even saw the interactions. I remember him uh... saying, yeah, was with, you know, had a thing for the big ladies. Hmm. But that's the thing they say, right? You know, like, big girls, black, big... White girls and black eyes. They love them. Can't get enough of them. Oh, a big white girl? Big white girl, yeah. Wow. Big white so girl. it couldn't be a sister. Yeah. I th I'm pretty <laughs> sure, yeah. Big white girl. I'd have to clarify that or wow. double. But back to Kiesa. Don't know what he does next. But what's his name? Who beat him again? Kiesa? Oh, Kevin Holland. Yeah. What's Kevin Holland do now? Kevin Holland. Oh, no. Even that. That's what Kevin Holland does. 
Don't go back up. No, Kevin Holland. Absolutely not. Don't go back up to 185. Said he's going back up to 185. I, I who actually no. Do what you got to do because he said he was hungry. And you know, you know as well as anybody, 145 was a tough cut for oh, you. Yeah. Who's, yeah, but chasing the big check, it makes it easy, you know. He's not. You, you, tough fights at 185. Big guys at 185. If you can make 170, you're going to fight guys that can't make 170. You know what I mean? Right. 170, 185, 205, those are the toughest weight classes to jump between because those are the biggest gaps. Yeah. Yeah, you see? Jones J check sleeping. I like a light now. Yeah, I don't know. But that's what he said after the fight, that he was going up. And I was like, oh, I don't like that for him. I, because at 170, the chance, he, I feel like he can contend with. He said he went down to 170 for the, for a shot at the BMF belt. But he said, if the BMF belt at 155, I can't make 155. The BMF belt is a. Participation trophy. Yeah. A really cool, respected, like, you're, sure. you, we have a lot of respect for you, so we're going to let you guys fight for a participation participation trophy. That's what that is. And the fans are cool with it, because it's like, all right, the fighters that are in it, the fight you made, all right, we'll deal with it. But if they were like, we're going to make the BMF division. Yeah. Then we'd be like, oh. Don't do that. So, I, I, I get what Kevin Holland was going for. He was going for Well, I Masvidal. mean, if you... Um... He was going for Masvidal. So, the way... If which if you're around 45, 55, even 70, you want Connor. Or, but maybe not 70, but some some people. If you're around 70, you wanted Masvidal. That was yeah. the money fight. That was the uh, biggest fight you can get. Which I think he beats him. It's tough. Because you remember, what does he do? Beat him on the feet? Now maybe if Masvidal slowed down. You forget. Remember like uh Masvidal versus Damian Maya? Or if he takes him down, he, you don't think he could sub him? Like No, Damian Maya couldn't sub him. Damian Maya put him in a lot of... Maybe... Eh, no, he's very savvy. Colby couldn't put him in too bad of spots on the ground. Was ground and pounding him, saying, like, submission-wise. Damian Maya didn't do much to him. He's very resilient and scrappy on the ground. But okay. Bobby Green, Tony Ferguson. Our boy, Loro. I love that Bobby Green gave Loro so much love. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, Loro's such a likable person. Marcos Gavin. Yeah, love Laurel. But even, it's just, you see, like, uh, you know, everyone always gave him love and was yeah. respectful and thank you, Laurel, and blah, blah, blah. But Bobby Green was like, Laurel, must have been like, Laurel, I know you don't speak English, but let's go. <laughs> you know? Like, I'm putting you on the camera. And he put him right in the interview with Megan O'Leary, I believe it was, or someone. It's whoever it was. And then even Laurel, like, Bobby Green said some stuff about Laurel, and you could see Laurel, like, you know, understood. But then they were like, you want to respond? He was like, can I speak in, can I speak in Portuguese? Because, like, you know, my English ain't coming out. And it was just cool to see Laura get that moment. Bobby Green gave him a lot of praise. Um, and then for Bobby Green to finish him with a submission. Because we said before the fight, he's good. He's training. If he's really training with Laura. Yes, yes. Ferguson isn't going to hit him with anything. Yeah. Even the way we were talking earlier, that's part of my what used to be my wizardry. Obviously, I, I trained for years, but Laura. Laura was a huge part in my sure. training, huge part in your training yeah. and your fighting and everything. Like yeah. a lot of times you were in positions, you're like, oh, Laura, you know, Laura taught me something here or sure. whatever. Well, also becoming just like jujitsu proof because he can do so good everywhere, you know? Yeah. Just if I could stop his stuff, I could stop, you know, anybody's stuff. Even Laura, you know, I grew up around it. Laura being a Bellator champion is like a gym legend. Yeah. You know, like, oh, no, he won Bellator title, and he was into good, but in the gym, he was really fucking good. Like, Yes. And then even... Yes, he was better in the gym, I think, than come competition night. Yeah. Very... His whole, obviously, was the striking, if anything, even in the... But his wrestling was better in the gym. And his wrestling was like... Yes. His wrestling was so good that it never would translate in the fights the way it should in the gym. Well... He never got taken down in his fights, really, right? No, his, I'm talking about his offensive wrestling was so good that he should have got to it that never, point. His offense never really worked on me. You're a D1 wrestler. Right. But what used to blow my mind is I would try to take him down, and he would gain 200 pounds. I was like, yeah. why can't I lift you? And then even he would be able to get to you, you'd stuff the takedown. Sure. So right there, he engaged. I mean, yeah, you know. obviously we did a ton of rounds together, and he got multiple takedowns on me, but... Yeah, his wrestling was really good, and I would always train it with him, and then the fights would come, and I'd be like, here we go, we're taking yeah. this guy down, and it's easier said than done, obviously, but 
It's good what, to see you now, Laurel. What do you think's next for Bobby Green? You know what's going to happen. They're going to give him the patty fight. I would love that. That'd be a good one. Yes. Especially, maybe. He might give back Patty respect. Patty would have to disrespect him to bring out that Bobby Green yes. that Tony brought out. That's a bad Bobby Green. I will, you do not want the hood to come out. No. I told you right before we started, that's what, where Tony fucked up. Yes. When keeping it real goes wrong right. for Tony Ferguson. Oof. Like someone asked him, a journalist said, what do you think or something? When you see Bobby and he said a couple, oh, he's a great fighter, blah, blah, blah. But I see fear. And Bobby Green was like, what? What, what? fear do you see? Yeah. And then they had that face off after them bickering at the press conference. And no, Bobby Green's not afraid of you. Bobby Green, you know. Um, so Ferguson, that's his seventh, sixth, sixth. Damn. What sucks about that too? Cause I'm a records guy who came from baseball is he at one point was 25 and three. And that was 25 and nine. Crazy. So I've always watched that since I was a little kid and seen guys like that develop yeah. these crazy records. And then the end of their career, right? Fedor, Anderson Silva. Come yes. to mind. BJ Penn even, I would say. Like, what was BJ at one point? And then BJ ended terribly. Well, the thing is, is and we've talked about this, it, it, guys who start chasing those checks. They were definitely, him and BJ definitely in that conversation of, yeah, the check's too big. I love how he was like, what do you mean retire? Yeah. I'm just getting started. Yeah, like at one point. Like, bro, like be one, real with yourself. At one point, BJ Penn was 14 and 5. Or fifteen and five, and then he finished his career. Sixteen and fourteen, so that means he went one and one and nine. Like Mark Kerr is actually another example of that. He's one of the originals that I remember looking at back in the day, where I remember Mark Kerr at one point was undefeated, and then he went from undefeated to couldn't win a fight again. I was worried about that at one point with Weidman, and then he started winning or got a win. Remember he like dogged out that win against Omari Akhmedov. Yes. That was like his first win in a minute. But yeah, at one point, Mark Kerr, my next example, Mark Kerr was twelve and zero. Then he was tw then he was thirteen and one, and then he finished his career fifteen and eleven. Well, the thing is, listen, I yes, you're as you get older, older the paychecks. No, but here I'm talking about how you feel. The the training has to change, right? So oh, obviously yeah. you're not going to train at the age of 39 like you did at the age of 29. You know what I'm saying? But I remember I, I always trained pretty similar throughout my whole career, and I just remember it. You know, my recovery getting slower, or me just kind of hurting more the next day toward the end yeah where i was like man this sucks just the grind hurt every morning a lot yeah and then having to go produce training you're like Fuck. which is funny because i always ask you now like you made it out good you're good right you have like an elbow a little bit of an elbow problem but overall so with that being said most people don't yeah with that being, so i know um you know, because as I was getting older, right, we were constantly adapting my training volume and stuff like that. And Ryan Parsons, like, if I showed you Dan Harrison's training schedule, you would laugh. Yeah. You, like, he you, was working out, like, three times a week. That's a thing for a lot of people. You know? A lot of people. Uh. Little cardio... In between, we go hard on Long Island. You guys were going hard. Yeah. yeah. If I were to have a competition coming up now, taking workout, you know, it would have to be, you know, I train one day, almost a rest day, train hard again, and that, you know. We've talked about it in the past. That was a really good room at the height of it. Yeah. That Long Island and Long Island MMA pro class, especially with the Sarah guys and the Tiger Showman's guys and everyone that would. Get in there. But Bobby Green, probably Patty Pimblett, something like that. Tony Ferguson. Fuck. Because 
if they cut him, you know he's gonna go going to the DFL. His wife's gonna say stop. He's gonna say shut up, bitch. Yeah. Uh, but I'm looking at his losses. All lost studs. To, lost to Charles Oliveira. He's that perfect example. He's at that point where the only thing he's gonna get, he's not getting number fifty. He's getting killers. But and someone, do you think Chandler changed him? No, I think he was changed. Because he knocked him that. out bad. No, I think he was changed before that. I think the. Do you want my, if my honest opinion on Ferguson was the knee injury, right? The trip of the trip of the wire and completely blowing out his whole knee. And then he came back and he was the same, but you're never the same with stuff no. like that. You're not. You're just not. You're cra if you're crazy, maybe, but mentally, but physically, you know, like I was saying before, like when training, I just, I could, you know, I used to be able to do three sets of fifty push-ups without a problem. Now, well, two sets of fifty are tough. The injuries are tough, and then we could segue there, but we'll finish with the card, and then we'll get to it. Is Spence? I was arguing with people on YouTube comments and on TikTok comments because I was like, I think Spence is different after the car crash. And people yeah. were like, no, he's not. Look at his last two fights. I was like, yeah, look at his last two fights. He's definitely different. I think his reactions are slower. His defense is off. Like, he's a different person. What do you mean? He's Chris Algieri said, you know, something like that has to change. Has to. A little bit. It's not possible. You know, he came out. He's just a warrior. He's a complete stud. Um, so I kind of wonder if that car accident didn't happen, how the Crawford fight, if it would be different at all. Mm, I don't know. Crawford still, Crawford, the accident changed Spence, but that fight might not have went different. Could have, but it might, it, Crawford's yeah. been that guy. So Gennady Golovkin was that guy for a long time at 160, where he was a WBO champion. No one would fight him. And then I remember Demetrius Andrade turned into that guy. Demetrius Andrade turned into that guy, too, at one point. Um, so Deontay Wilder commented that he can see in Spence's eyes and just how he was moving that he was dehydrated. He sucked too much weight, he thinks. Yeah. He Possible. looked dry at weight. Like, he was ripped. The funniest thing I saw, and it, it stone it to stone, and he looked high. He looked like yo, he, he looked like he just smoked and was walking out there. I, you ever, what's that movie? Pineapple Express. Right. When she's like, I see you two, your eyes red as the devil's dick. You two are high as fuck. <laughs> That's what he looked like. Yeah. High as fuck. And even the fight looked like oh, he, he showed up to sparring high today, and got fucked up. And even for Terrence Crawford, I sent you that one clip. You saw that with uh, I think Jermel Charlo, is who he was right. talking shit to. He was like, you next, buddy. We like, not, knocked Spence down, then walked over, grabbed his nuts, and then was like, you next, you next. And then you saw even off that, that guy, I'm pretty sure, I don't think it was him, it was that guy's twin brother got slapped by Caleb Plant. Oh, that was his twin brother? Yeah. Because the name sounded familiar, I was like. You don't see a lot of slaps like that. That was a good one. That was like Power Slap. Like Power Slap should have clipped that and fucking been like, next episode, next week. Yeah. Caleb Plant, you in, you know? But he made space. Sla slapped the shit out of him. Also, people got in there real quick to break real it quick. up. But that's a. I think that's what people probably think. Like, oh, if, when fighters get into a fight, they let it. No, usually when two fighters get into a fight, everyone's like, "Holy shit, we gotta stop this!" Holy shit, yeah, 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 yeah. it's um, gonna be bad. It's gonna be bad. But it was his brother. They both fight. They both fight. Both bad, badass. Is yeah, there yeah. any rhyme or reason why he smacked him? I don't know. I think they had beef words. Want to fight each other? I don't know if they've already fought. I'm not a big Caleb Plant guy. He got crushed by Earl Spence, no? Who? Caleb Plant. No, bigger. Who, who crushed him? Um, it was a big fight. What's his name? He fought. Uh, what's his face? The sixty pounders. I think it, he. he uh, what's the uh, ginger guy? Oh, Canelo. Yeah. That's right. That's right. My brain was uh. <laughs> the ginger Mexican. I was about to be like Frivola. Frivola. <laughs> oh, that was that's the funniest thing. I wanna I I was gonna give it to Frivola, but then I actually thought like, man, I gotta save it for one day when we have Frivola with us. But he listens to our show, so I'll give it to you. And he's told me about it. But I was gonna like we should get him to do something with us and then just be like, Alright, we're going Canelo. Canelo, Canelo. We'll just pretend <laughs> he's Canelo. 
Have him put on a little accent. And just will run up to him like, you know, Canelo, Canelo. I love it. Do you know who this is? It's Canelo. Holy shit. Can I get a picture with you? And just make it like, and have people start swarming him. People will be like, it's Canelo, it's Canelo. He would just have to shave his beard, though. He 100% at quick glance, someone would be like, it is, it is Canelo, you he know? He would have to shave his beard, though. Yeah. Canelo's clean shaven. No, he has a beard sometimes. He'd have to shake the, the big beard off. Yes. Yeah. We'll go with stubbles. Yeah. Uh, he loved him. But yeah, he got fucked up by Caleb Plant. Or Caleb Plant got fucked up by Canelo. But, I mean, Crawford, I saw the highlights of that fight. Brutal. He just... Competitive a little bit early, but you saw Crawford just had him. And then, so one of Errol Spence's best things is his jab. That's where he runs his fights. And he was getting it off a little bit. He had one, two rounds where it was like, oh, maybe he's... And then all of a sudden it was like, oh, whole fight changed. What's Crawford wild caught him. was you would see Spence land like a solid punch where you're like, oh, damn. But then he would come over and just like melt him. It was like, yeah, what the... How, like, you, how would you get hit and then just like... Not today, Junior. Boom. You know? yeah. Drop a guy. Crawford. I did look. He hit an uppercut. Spence Hook came, and then he hit him with a right. A, Triple G was that guy at one point. Canelo is that guy right now. Uh, not Canelo. Uh, Demetrius Sanjaraj is that guy right now a little bit. There's always these guys who wind up, like Terrence Crawford, who wind up with that outskirt championship. the w, Or even the IBF or the WBO. Now he's got all three types, right? That was, uh, he's the first person to unify in two weight classes. You know? Yeah, he's a problem. But I'm saying, like, that's where he's been his whole career is like, then he unified a division below, and it's like, oh, all right, he's for real. He's the first boxer in history to unify in two weight classes. It's crazy. And now he has a chance to do it in three weight classes. Unify if he goes up and fights that dude uh, that he was calling, that he was talking shit to. Oh, okay. Yeah. Which I'm pretty he sure. He can put on a little muscle and be fine, I think. Yeah. He's like 5'8", I think. 5'9". Yeah. Wait, wait, 146 and a half, I think? Yeah, that fight was at 47. But Terrence Crawford's that guy, so good for him. I was rooting for Spence, but like we said, you gotta go. I was rooting for him. Yeah. And if you're rooting for him, you like him, because I was, was on to him because he's the guy who, supposedly the guy who was one of the first people to get the better of Mayweather in sparring. So I was like, oh, shit, someone beat up Mayweather. Well, like I said. And then it was a whole thing. Speaking to Algieri, he was like, he, you know, he told me, dude, this guy is different. Yeah. He's going to be a champion. Oof. And then we'll finish 291 quick. And then we'll even go back to that one. But Derek Lewis, you saw that? That's right. Came out. And I said he was the B knee. I said he was the BMF at heavyweight. Came out with the Masvidal. With, yes. the, with the flying... Which nobody does that, except for Verdun. <laughs> well, he said, you know who does it is six-pack Derek Lewis, because he showed up with, with abs oh, for this one. that's right. That's right. Yeah. He's like, I got abs. I got to be doing flying shit. He's fine. He, he needed that. That was huge. He was not cut like we talked about, but he was in trouble for his job if he lost that fight. Yeah. But what he's, was he's I, locked in for another three fights. Because probably. of the skid... And the odds, everyone was like, and I'm even me, I was like, oh, I think Delima might get him. But then I kind of was thinking before the fight, I'm like, Delima's the elite and the really good guys kind of beat Lewis, especially lately that he's improved. Before he's lost other fights, but Delima's right beneath that. You know, he wasn't that level of guy to beat Derek. He also came out and put it on him early. Right from the jump. Um, and then Pajera Blockowitz. Did you I get to watch this fight? I was talking to, but they were, were like, why'd they stop the fight? He was covered up. I'm like, do you know what it's like getting hit by those cinder blocks? Oh, the, the Lima fight? Yes. Yeah, and the Lima wanted nothing to do with that. And yeah. and I also told them, you know, I think I was talking to my lady. Is the ref is there saying, "Hey, give me something. Move. You got to move. You got. You got to show me something. If you stay here, that means listen. If, if I you don't have. answer his commands, then you can't. With yeah. with not verbal. You have to actually answer yeah. his commands with action. And we've seen that. Who did it recently with the thumbs up? And then I always remember Uriah Faber had the thumbs up. Someone did it recently where they gave a thumbs up and they stopped the fight. Forget who, but he was getting fucked up, and you can't do that. Got to react. Yes. Don't look at the ref and say anything. anything the thumbs like up is if you're getting like submitted. Yeah. People were doing it when they were getting fucked up. Yeah. And that's when you can't do it. 
But did you watch Pajeda versus Jan Blahovich? No. Wanted to. One of the you don't eat, you don't want to. It's a Dennis Bermudez, really? Dennis Bermudez, Angela Hill special split decision. Could have went either way. What type of what are you judging? What are you watching? Blahovich out grappled him, had the control time, Pajeda landed the strikes, and then even Blahovich actually hit the wall with the he he tough through it, but the cardio, the altitude. Okay. He had like you know the eight the eight minute mark. He was slow. He went in slow motion. And then the third round, he was slow motion. Yeah. Labored. And then Pajada just couldn't find the mark to knock him out, but had moments. But I thought, first glance, I was like, oh, Blahovich. Split for somebody, probably, but I'm leaning Blahovich. Now, Pajada, who does he fight next? Title fight. Did, did Dana White say that? Mm. No, Dana didn't. Was do... there not a journalist that asked him that question? Dana was on a uh, vacation. Oh, that's right. Yeah. But still, there's somebody comes in. No, I don't think I, nobody asked that. I think that it was led to be that, like led on that the winner of this would be in the title fight. But then I did see something else that said Izzy versus, or someone might be starting that rumor. Actually, I think that's what it was: Izzy versus Jiri. At, for the 205 belt. Yeah. Probably a rumor. Yeah. You lost to Bl- Blachowicz. Who did? Izzy. Oh, Izzy did. Yeah, yeah. So you can't jump up and... But he won tight fight since then. I guess there is yeah. the three-way... And... The, and you know what the biggest thing is? They probably look at the numbers. Like, oh, yeah, we, we, you could do that. The pay-per-view numbers or the... Instagram, social media numbers, and they go, oh, yeah, it's, it, it's not as good as slap fight. Well, but... it's a super fight. Yeah, and then they go, yeah, it's not as good as slap fighting, but we see what you're doing, Izzy. We like it. You never seen that? How Dana White, when it was against the media a little bit, because Dana White was saying how slap fighting's numbers are off the charts. Better than the NFL, better than the UFCs, better than baseball, better than everybody. And it's true. Really? When you add up the views and impressions off of TikToks and Instagrams and videos like that that he was talking about. Okay. Same as anything. Like, all right, this video got 10 million impressions and 2 million views or whatever, and they fucking... That's what it is. it's so easy to put out those highlights. It's just yeah, one so slap. Slap fighting content went crazy. So when Dana started revealing these metrics, people were like, I don't believe him. I was like, oh, all right, I could see it because I'm... And even all these other people that were questioning it are like YouTubers, I guess. I don't know if they don't watch the metrics or whatever. I could totally see that. Weird shit pops sometimes. And then these little, it wasn't like 10-minute, hour-long, 7-minute videos were getting these numbers. It was those slaps, those short, you know. But what happens is like or view, share gets pushed in the algorithm. So so many people saw it. It was so many eyes delivered. I'll take those numbers. Yeah. Sure. So Dano took those numbers and went, these are the numbers. We outdid all these companies. And then there was a media member who was like, you did? And he was like, yeah. Really? Yeah. Are you sure? And Dana was like, I'll, I'll, he was like, who? And Dana did the, where are you from? And he told him where he's from. He's like, I'll give you the numbers. Supposedly that guy's dead now. <laughs> um, I think, like you said, yeah, sure, they're getting impressions. Or I watched them all. That show up. Love them. You Ham, you got me for seven seconds when you seven seconds. We never talked about that either. How do you feel to about watch it? someone get Molly Wild? Obviously, then it, unless it's if they were like fifty grand, you'd be in you'd be like, I'm going to slap fight next weekend. But obviously you're not gonna be like I'm going in there for two grand or whatever. But how do you feel about slap fighting? We never talked about that. It's dumb. I mean it's cool but dumb. Yeah. Exactly. But dumb, but I will watch it. Yes. Especially the production. You know what Dana White did with slap fighting is like just familiarity. You know, like this pizza tastes like the pizza I used to eat. So I'm watching it and I'm like, this looks like something I watch. It's like UFC and tough programming, but with slapping. So I'm like, all right, you know what? Keep it on. I'll watch it. I'm yet to watch a slap event. And then they build the characters and maybe some of the characters are corny, but the way in is retarded. It's all UFC. They're just, I'm saying I know. It. You know, that's what I'm saying. It's pizza. It's not your favorite pizza, but it's pizza. Yes. 
And then these guys talking smack. It's like, dude, you do not train. You're a fat guy. But that that's part of it too. What gets you animated or into it is like, fuck this guy, or I like this guy. It's right. Wait, wait, yeah. Wait, wait. It's, I it, mean, it's pizza, hundred percent killer. I like. I've I had this argument at the token challenge I did a couple weeks ago. That event, and uh, I said, yeah, I like slap. And I'm not gonna hate on slap. And I'm not. I really. The production and the idea of it. I'll watch it. But it's almost like, for the most part, it's a coin flip. If you win if, the coin flip, you win. It, you'd be in. If someone was all of a sudden like, yeah, figured it out. Friday night, my new show, Street Fights. Dana White Street Fights or Stan the Man Street Fights on Friday nights. I'm going to air it on fucking ESPN or something. Right? YouTube, anything. You wouldn't watch that. Yeah, of course. So if slap fighting got super monetized and got a rocket ship strapped to its back and the production is upgraded, all right, now it's the greatest production possible in maybe a shitty sport, but I'll watch it. It's interesting. I'll click it. I don't think people are following slap boxing like they're following the UFC. I think that's where a lot of people were like... The familiarity is what got me. I think people don't separate. That's where the hate comes in. And people are like, this isn't UFC. Why are you promoting this on UFC? They promote fucking Jake Gyllenhaal movies too on UFC. You know, people don't go in the same uproar. But even all that shit, I'm into. Anything that they can do and 10x and like we're gonna put the all right, it's a weird thing. We're gonna put the best production behind it and all right, now we did. Now we're getting somewhere. Maybe I'll watch. It. But I mean, I will watch any type of violence. It doesn't that's, have that's to what, be. That's what I'm saying. Like yeah. I'll watch like if something on Instagram pops up and someone getting hit by a bus, I'm like, whoa, switch. I'm like. Yeah, the car crash mentality. Yeah. Everyone loves car crashes. But so you, Pajera, probably fighting for the title. So now the BMF belt. Blahovich too. If I was Blahovich, I'm I'm breaking a mirror, I'm punching a wall, I'm doing something when I go in the back. He did, he, he definitely felt like yes, he, you know. Same thing I've said with with the judging. When we it's a conversation we've had many times. Split decisions. They should be like, get ready, we're going again. Get ready, we're going again. Let go. A whole nother fight or another a round, round? A round, another round, yeah. Get ready, we're going again. How? Who wants to win? For a split decision. Yeah. Split decisions go into sudden victory. Draws go into sudden victory. Five minute round. And if after that five minutes, it's still a draw, go into another one. Draws, yes. I think draw. it wasn't a draw, though. A split decision is a draw. But is it? Yeah. It's not. It is to me. But here's the th- get me more judges, man. I don't want to. Yes. Cause... Because a lot of times, even I've seen so many split decisions where it's three up. Ooh, maybe there, there you got me. Maybe I'm gonna go to MMA decisions real quick, and I'm gonna see where they scored that one. Because I had it for Blahovich, and it went two to one. What's his name? Pajera. Alex Pajera. Well, Alex Pajera has like. Ah. Uh... They had it more for, the media had it more for Pajeda. Is that the judging every every minute? Do you get a point? No, this is MMA decision, so people scored it 29-28. Okay. And then, so only four people scored it for Blahovich, and then probably like 15-20 scored it for Pajeda. Eh, I only watched it once. I smoked, was smoking weed, hanging out, moving shit while I was watching it. But... Um. but was a good fight. It delivered. But Blahovich tried. Oh, even right from the jump, Blahovich was like, nope, wrestling. Shot a takedown. Oh, right dude. off the jump. Yeah. Stuff? Get stuff? Get stuff, yeah. Got some takedowns, though. He How was, old is Blahovich? He's old. He's 40 now. But then the BMF belt. Your boy. I mean, both your boys, I would say. But I feel like you and Poirier were friends. We there's definitely respect. Respect, yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I'm saying. So it's, you, I love violence, but he got flatlined. Yeah, you saw that even, not flatlined like they had to wake him up, but oh yeah, yeah. that was he went off for a second. The you ground have to follow that up. He went off and the ground woke him up. Yes, like the way he fell, I was like, oh. you know what's wild? So I'm, I was watching it. I'm like, I'm like, I'm confused because his hand was there. Yeah. 
And then, I mean, I, I'd have to watch it a few more times. Like, did the foot come around and kick him in the back of the head? Like, I think just the impact even of the this, con, you know, the shin connected to this and drove this into his head. Yeah. Was it a headshot or a neck? Both. I mean, that's what my little cousin I was watching. He was like, oh, he kicked him in the neck. I was like, that's a little bit of both almost. Because the neck almost like. Sure. When it goes in here, your shin's touching the chin, you know. It's, yes. But you got, you've seen, you know, people get kicked in the neck mainly. Rhonda. Just the, Rhonda. The, the head wraps around. Yeah. There's, the, there's, a, there's definitely shaking of the brain. Yeah. Um, but also, the ner- like, just lights off. Crazy knockout. And right. then the best is they were like, do you ever, have you ever done that? He's like, never did it. Don't work it, anything. And then he's like, before the fight, he's like, I never trained it. Don't work it. Before the fight. I asked Trevor or someone, he's like, I threw it and said, does this look like a right hand? And then threw the head kick and they were like, yep. And he was like, all right, I'm going to try it, I guess. And the biggest fight of my life in a couple minutes. And then it, Poirier said after the fight, yep, surprised me with it. Didn't think he was going to be launching head kicks. And then I blocked it in the first round and then saw it coming, thought I was going to get my shit up and boom. Yeah. I'd have to rewatch it, but yeah, I, I thought that too. I think that's what it was. Either neck or just pushed his own shit into his. He's so good with. Not that he's good with it, but he handles loss like. Yeah. Very professional, you know? He handles losing better than he handles winning. Hundred per- One million yeah. percent. One million percent. He wins, and he's like, you dirty bastard. Look what the fuck. And they're like, no, nah, good fight. Nah, fuck you. It's like, oh, all right. That's how he wins. When he loses, yo, man, great fight. Nothing but respect, you know? Crazy. Sa- Sour Patch Kid, for you. And then Gaethje immediately wins the fight. Looked great. Saw the first fight, and then saw the second fight. Gaethje controlled himself a little more. Instead of trying to walk Poirier down. Kind let, of like I said. I, yeah, let the know. fight come to him, was patient, and then... Where does that push each guy now? Poirier's reached that status. Diaz, Masvidal, I think. Diaz isn't in, in the UFC anymore. I'm saying that status. Not okay. that he's going to fight yes. them. I'm saying oh, that okay. status doesn't matter who he fights. He's going to be a main event. And it's going to have title implications on it. Either the guy beating him is getting close to the title or it's getting Dustin back into a contender fight. I would love to see Dustin fight Colby. That's never going to happen. They already tried and he wouldn't want it. Dustin didn't want it. But then even after the fight, Dustin or uh, Justin Gaethje won, Connor wrote, like, I would fuck, you know, I would, wrote, I would fucking kill this guy. Some yeah, shit like I saw that. that. And then people were asking Gaethje about it. Gaethje was like, don't talk to me about that guy anymore. He said to Megan Olivia, he's like, don't bring that guy. Are we, are we live right now? And Megan was like, no, we're not live. I was like, all right, good. Don't talk to me about that guy no more. Don't bring that guy up anymore. And then the other well, media. Well, he's. Sick of hearing about it. Only mi- a money fight. He's kind of, he's. Well, In terms on, of fighting on. for what matters or, or getting closer to a title fight, he's irrelevant. They said, do you want to fight Connor? And he said, Connor's turned me down six times. Plus, and then he said something else, something else. Then he said, plus, I don't really want to fight a guy on steroids. So let's stop talking about it. And it was like, oh, shit, we're going to go there? Yeah. Yeah. Mic drop by Gaethje. He still hasn't... Um, I don't think he's in... I, you know, I think he's, he's they, No, the, I think he's in USADA. There's journalists out there that know how to look it up. I haven't discovered that yet, but... He uh, might be in the pool. I'm not sure. But, see you later, Chandler. The fight to make... Is Conor McGregor versus Gaethje? Because I've told you before. Why not Chandler? They're the BMF belt and a better fight. And I, I get it. They're on tough and it'll be, you know, a good fight. But the lightning right now could strike and it would be Gaethje. Chandler and Conor would be a great fight, but Conor wants that BMF belt. You're they right. made that BMF belt for Conor. They don't have to admit it. I know. I know from watching from a distance. <laughs> what are you talking about? 100%. Remember, they... Well, then why did it start at 170? Because they were trying to lure Conor back. Look who they put in the fight. Uh, they put Nate Diaz, and they put Masvidal. And then Dana would always make it like, oh, Conor won't fight Masvidal, I'm keeping him away. And then he said, like, coy, you know, side little things. Like, oh, Conor's not big enough for Masvidal. 
fuck the fuck I am, mate. You know, like, well, yeah. Connor thinks he's big enough for anybody. He'll fight the heavyweights. So you can't tell him he's small. He was like, I'll fight Miles, but I'll fight Nate at 70 twice. I don't give a fuck. They made that first BMF belt because Connor was out and contract negotiations and they couldn't get Connor back. So they made the BMF belt like a little hook. And then Connor came back and he was 100% easily they could have Do had him fight for the BMF belt. Every weight class should have a BMF belt. Right. Hold on. Right now, they can't get Connor back. So what do they do? Poirier, Gaethje. We tried to put him against Gaethje a bunch of times. It would be an action fight if we could make it happen. You already fought Poirier a couple of times. We could run that one back. Let's do it. BMF belt. Connor will tweet about it. Connor will. There's no way Connor's going to say silent on it. Other pay per views, Connor don't say nothing. Guarantee you, he comments on Gaethje and Poirier winner. And then what did he do? He said, "I want to fight Gaethje. I'll, I'll kill Gaethje. I'll, I'll fuck Gaethje up. Yeah, I'll slap him up. Yeah, I'll kill him. Make the fight. That's the fight." Not Chandler, because then even what'll happen is Gaethje will talk that shit if you provoke him. Connor will say something, and Gaethje will be like, nah, fuck you, like, shut up. Chandler will laugh it off and be like, you know, he, he could talk, but our team, our team is 7-1, and one and, right. you know. Come fight night. Yeah, where Gaethje, they're selling to, you know, that that fan that just wants the violence. You, you're getting that same fan with Chandler, yeah, but that extra is Gaethje. The BMF belt on the line. Like Chandler's PG-13. Yeah. Chandler's... Gaethje will, Gaethje's like, Gaethje will be rated R. Right. Yeah. Both fights could be rated R and blah, 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 but the pre-fight, you know? Even Gaethje's not a street fighter. I think if uh, Connor mushed Gaethje's face, that would have been Gaethje's first street fight. Sure. Chandler was like, we're, that, that clip stuck in my head. We're going to fight? We're going to fight right now? And then you watch it, you're like, yeah. Really, what happened? Ryan Bader pushed the other dude out of the way. Like, I got you, Chandler. Fight him. And then he turned around and looked like, you're not doing nothing? Like, what are you doing? I would have been fucked this dude up. 100%. Um, and it's not like, oh, Chandler's a bitch. Some people, you know, that, that's well, not, they're not Chandler, fighters. I would be like, that. Would, I would have a similar reaction. I yeah, think. like, I'm not, not, I'm not, not a, ready. I'm a respectful guy. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm not saying it in a bad way at all. No, you know what I mean? I'm yes. saying he's just that. He's, con he's controlled, if you will, yes. that discipline. That he's like, oh, what the fuck? Right. Are you Why'd serious? Why'd you do that? Yeah. Why'd you push me? Where I, think... I would... I'm so bad at confrontation yeah. that it would almost need to be predetermined. Like, in the locker room. Like, yo, what are you going to do if he pushes you? I'd be like, I, you know, if he pushed me, I would do A, B, and C. So then when it happened, I'm like, I said I was doing B. Because then what What do you do otherwise, Islam? So even right now, Gaethje's got the, Gaethje has the red panty ticket or the Willy Wonka ticket, if you will. Remember Poirier? They were like, you could fight for the title or you could fight Conor McGregor. And he was like, I'll fight Conor McGregor. Right. Then they were like, you could fight for the title or you could fight Conor McGregor again. He was like, I'll fight Conor McGregor again. Easy money. Yeah. So Gaethje... Fight Conor McGregor. You beat Conor McGregor. Your stock skyrockets. Then you fight for the title. And you get on barred by Islam. I don't think he's beating Islam. Who's that? I don't think he gets on barred by Islam. Nah, right? no, I'm joking. But I think like, yeah, he could beat Islam. Because Islam is not Khabib. We've seen it. I think even the fact that... He'll it, get tired. The fact that Islam got knocked out, you can almost say with Khabib, can't get knocked out. We've seen his chin tested and he or whatever. Just all right, maybe he's one of those guys. He's an iron chain, he made it through. Never seen him knocked out. So I can't say he gets knocked out. I can't say someone's gonna knock him out, you know. I've seen Islam get caught. So Gaethje could knock him out, but by not even like a like a main known guy. Yeah. Oh, something interesting too about this fight. So remember how we were talking about Gaethje and I said he usually chokes, if you will, or loses these you know, kills everybody and then gets to this one and has said it himself, lays an egg. Like, just not himself in these bigger fights. He said before this fight, it was the calmest I think he's ever felt or that he was just eerily calm. And then he started trying to hype himself up and Trevor Whitman was like, no, no, no. Let's go with this. Stay calm. 
and he like kept him calm before the fight. And then he said he went out there, was still calm. He's like, no adrenaline, no nothing. And then he said, once we started, the adrenaline started, but I was just like in a zen. It was almost like a very hyped up sparring match for him. I bet you he's an animal in the gym. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Some of his best performances are probably in training. Yeah. Oh, you saw that too. Your boy Kush Usman was like really emotional. You see that clip? Yes. Very emotional. I guess him and Gage, Gim and Gaethje are probably really close. Well, now. yeah. Then I saw it on Instagram. So then I I commented, miss us, dot, 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 <laughs> like a cry face. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no response. I was going to say, I bet you didn't respond to that one either. Yeah, it happens. But what else do you want to talk about? Nate Diaz, Jake Paul this weekend. Let's That's get right. To it. You're going. Going. I wish the menace could go. We got to blow this thing up to that that point where it's like, kids are coming with us. Everybody, we're putting yeah. the gang. We're putting the gang on Vacation. a plane. Putting the gang on a plane. I just got to work a couple hours. Yeah. That's Jake Paul yeah, right be there. Cool. Even like, so for That's in- the goal. So like, comment, subscribe. For instance, like your kids know Jake Paul. Yes. My four-year-old nephew. Was like, Jake Paul? No, Jake. I know Jake Paul. Yeah. Jake Paul. You know, I was like, all right, you know Jake Paul. Yeah. yeah. So they, my kids think he created Prime. Yeah. So where Nate Diaz is like a god, if you will, or a legend to like diehard fight fans, like, like all the Diaz brothers and the army, the Diaz army is right. like a folklore thing. Jake Paul is a huge youtuber and is almost Dude. that guy for youtube like a, a youtube you're the legend right. of youtube vine what, what is how old is Nate? oh he's up there i think he's 36 37 he's not the same age as me bro 38 38 or 39 so i saw one video and then some controversy came out about it i don't know if you saw it the nate diaz sparring video where nobody, they didn't say what round it was, anything like that, but it was Nate, like... Oh, that he looked super slow. Looked slow, but he was fucking the guy up in the sparring. Like, he was, it was as if his fight with Connor or one of those fights where the guys, ta- like, his fight with Gray Maynard, where he's, like, chasing them down and peppering right. them. Right. That's what the sparring looked like. And then even just Diaz's brother. He's you know? 38, bro. Yeah. What's Jake? 28, 26? In his 20s. Yeah. I don't like that. I don't like anyone fighting Jake Paul and the thought of, like, you know, an MMA fighter getting smoked by Jake Paul and then the theory or the casual being like, oh, no, box, YouTube boxing is better than MMA. Right. But then again, Jake Paul's different. Jake Paul really trains. One thing that's weird about this fight, or at least a thing to watch, is I know Jake Paul changed his camps. I don't Jake know. Paul's twenty six. I don't know if BJ Flores is out, but I know he's not like the head trainer. I know he hired like Shane Mosley, and I don't know if Jay Leon Love is still involved. I don't know. He changed he's up some 12 things. Twelve years younger. Yeah. And when I felt I could probably twenty six year old menace was a monster. Twenty six. Probably was my your prime. That's the thing prime. too. People hit the primes at different ages. Nate Diaz. Nate Diaz's prime is not thirty-eight. Nate Diaz is not in his prime right now. Yeah. But we're taking some things out though. So, and there's a thing. There. What is, about the smoking weed thing? Ooh, it's gonna be tough for him. But he's a professional. He'll figure it out. But there's some things like. In fighting, if you will, or even in boxing, like, now that we're taking all the other things out, Nate only has to worry about boxing. So, he's a fighter. He's an athlete. He has a lot of rounds. And then there is, like, this folklore about the D- both of the Diaz brothers that Andre Ward's one of the best boxers of our era, of our lifetime. Had injuries and stuff, that's why he's not the guy. He would have probably been a Floyd or something had he not had the injuries. Right. They used to spar him. Andre Ward used to sing fucking praises of both the Diaz brothers that I'd be like, no fucking chance that either one of these guys do anything to Andre Ward. He's a fucking gold medalist in the Olympics, undefeated pro. Nobody touches Andre Ward. They used to fucking like. And then I remember Andre Ward did an interview and he said, he's like, their style is weird. 
Their timing's weird. Those elbows up. Their timing's weird. Their cardio's fucking impeccable. Good reach. And they're fucking, they're durable as can be. So the second that you go, they go, and they're on you with combinations. They back you up. He like gave a description of a boxer that I was like, oh, that guy sounds good. He was talking about Nate and Nick Diaz, or one of the brothers. I, I'm pretty sure it was even Nate. And he was saying about like when they, they asked him, I think when he was fighting Conor McGregor. And he's commented on Nick too. They have deceptive striking. Take out the kicks, take out the wrestling. I mean, it's just hands. They got some weird. There, yeah. There's a realm where he just peppers Jake Paul up. You know, like Jake Paul's throwing and he's just touching him, not hitting him, touching, touching him. And then how later, did the fight go? I think. Whew, I'm rooting for Nate Diaz. I want Nate Diaz to win by TKO late in the fight. That's what I'd be hoping for. That's a realm that's very possible. We've never seen Jake Paul stop, but we've seen Nate stop people late or surge late in the fight. I mean, if you ask Nate, he beat Leon Edwards late in the fight. It's a tough one. It's, it's not a tough one. How long are the rounds? It's not a tough one. How long are the rounds? I believe three minutes. I believe ten three-minute rounds. It's not a tough one in the reality realm of fighting. We live in this crazy world where shit happens where Jake Paul knocked out Woodley and Ben Askren got knocked out. But it's all, here's what it is. It's also the narrative that got painted where it's he's a YouTube boxer. No. Trained with BJ yes, Flores. no, I got it. He was legit the whole time. These guys, it showed Woodley slacked and didn't take him seriously or had serious holes in striking. Ben Askren didn't take him seriously. And they ran it back. Didn't take him seriously. I think... They ran it back, though. Tommy Fury took him seriously. I think Nate Diaz did take Jake Paul seriously. You're going to tell me Woodley didn't take it seriously the second time? I'm saying he, he showed holes in his shit. Like, serious holes in his shit. And shit that we saw... In his MMA fights, he, something happened somewhere where Woodley went, I don't throw punches anymore. I'm gun shy. No, he didn't throw a lot of shots. He was having some success in the second fight, but it was like, no, you should be, you're a UFC champion. You have endless more rounds of combat experience. You should be throwing way more shots and smoking him. Instead, he started letting Jake Paul lead and started biting on Jake Paul's feints and got knocked out. Fighting's fucked I'm up. I'm going to go Jake Paul. I can't pick him. I can't pick when Conor McGregor. I used to, I'm a big Conor fan. Nate Diaz was my fucking guy. No, I know. So when Conor started winning me over with the chirping and funniness, sure. and then he was gonna fight RDA, I'm like, oh, I hope he beats RDA. Then when that fight fell out and it was like, oh, Conor's gonna fight Nate Diaz, I was like, oh my god, how do I pick? Like, what do I do here? I gotta go. I, I can't. Yeah, I remember that. I was like, "There's no chance I pick Connor to win, even though I like him. I'm not picking against the Diaz brother." Okay. Smoking weed and jujitsu. Oh, I had Connor to win the first time. Yeah. It was one of those ones where I was like pacing in the living room because I that like, was the very first time I picked Connor to win, and and he lost. I was like, "What?" Like, did I like Connor? Sure, but I'm not picking against. You know, I love Robbie Lawler. I picked Nick Diaz. I thought I knew Robbie was going to win. My heart. I was like, I'm going Nick Diaz. I'm not picking against Nick Diaz. Nick. Nick. That's what I'm saying. Even, yeah, when they fought. Yeah. It's a tough pick. You can't pick against the Diaz brothers. For me, other people are like, fuck them. They suck. They got no wrestling. But. Who's going to win? Who do you guys got? Jake Paul or Nate Diaz? But yeah, I'm going to go. I'm going to try to get as much footage as I can blog i got the the superstar gigolo extraordinaire rob bones coming with me what's his price ladies oh yeah, he's slinging dick in dallas what's his price oh me and rob bones will be there slinging dick in dallas what how much you want i'm going tomorrow bones? i'm gonna get myself cleaned up wow i'm gonna get the tape up everything lined up nice <whistles> pick up the suit from the dry cleaners and then we're going to sling dick in dallas me and rob bones but yeah, we're going to run this shit up. Numbers are going to keep going up. And then eventually it'll be a family trip. We'll bring the Menace Boys. We'll bring the lady. 
Lou. But yeah, on to uh, Dallas. I'm leaving Wednesday. And then move back. I'm homeless today. Yeah, shout out to Rage and Al. Rage and Al closed the deal today. Got my family a gift. Sold the house. Closed the deal. So I'm moving upstate. And then me and Manis were shaking and baking, making moves today. Trying to get them ready for October oh, right. or August 12th. August 12th. I'm Ken Lester Memorial. I'm going to do a little wrestling. A little wrestling. I'm excited for it. Now it's two weeks, right? Like, let's say I hit it hard and train hard in two weeks. Like, what am I going to... Well, that's the humor of the vlog. The is... vlog is kind of like, listen, I'm coming off the couch. Did, yeah, did he train? No, not at all. Right. And we'll see what happens. That's what we're doing. You know when like that over the hill athlete thinks you still got it? Right there. Yeah, you know, like, right there. <laughs> I also won't be surprised if I win it. Hundred percent. You're not over the you know, it's a joke, obviously. You could still be in the USC. But I also if I lose will be like, fucking this is bullshit. If you wanted to, you could still be in the UFC winning fights. Yes. You could be doing grappling tournaments and right. winning fights. Yes. Doing all that. But instead, you gotta keep the lights on for everybody, so Thank you for that, Menace. Let's get out of here. Hit him with your uh, send off. Maybe we'll do something else this weekend because now okay. I'm homeless. So I'm just going to yeah. be posted up in the Menace Cave okay. with into the internet. It. I'm into it. All right. Well, see you later. Well, see you later. This one. Yeah, that's the real one. That's the Menace Cave.